Amen. Come on, everybody say hope. hope. Yeah, come on. We're going to have hope. Wow, you guys are in it today. Love it. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Donna, are you doing okay this morning? Awesome. You're welcome. Here we go. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire comes, it is a tree of life. Sorry, Stephen, I just saw the Pastor Kelly soldier back there. That's funny. Um, I still love it. Hope deferred. We've been talking about hope the last couple of weeks. And I want to put down for you. Come on, one more time for me. Everybody say hope. Here's what hope is. Hope is the feeling of what is wanted. The feeling of what is wanted can be had or that the events will turn out for the best. It is to look forward to with desire reasonable confidence to look forward to with desire and reasonable confidence it is an expectation everybody say expectation it is an expectation or an, an anticipation that's what hope is it's an expectation that things will turn out so as we break the scripture down the word deferred as we've been teaching the last couple of weeks means to delay it means to pause it means to stretch out as grabbing hold of something but not yet being able to get it so when your hope is put on pause when the hope of your life is delayed it's you're stretching out and you're doing everything that you can to grab a hold of what is wanted and what is needed but you just fall short of it you just fall short of it the word heart there means your soul everybody say soul I'm teaching you, okay? I want you to understand this. I'm teaching you because here's what my call is and our call on our life and my wife's call and what Impact Life is all about is to help people to come to know God in a deeper way, but not just be religious and around church. I want this to work outside. If this don't work in our personal lives, then this is all a joke. I don't talk like other pastors do. I'm just who I am. But if faith in Christianity doesn't work out there when depression and addiction and, and, and all kinds of stuff is beating up our mind, then this ain't, then this, what are we here for? And I'm not into playing church or being religious. I'm here, and I want a relationship with Jesus Christ because I know and I can testify. I can testify. As hard as life can get, God works. He's faithful. And his love knows no boundaries. These two wonderful people sitting right here, my parents, have taught me and I have seen God move in their life. Dad's getting ready next month to be 185 years old. <laughs> now, dad's getting, ready to be <laughs> dad's getting ready to be 85 years old. And he's, he's slowing down, but he's good. I'm very blessed to have a father like that, that, that he's his, his healthy for the most part. Mom keeps going through sickness and battles, but God keeps healing her. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing. Mom just turned 81, and I have seen God's hand. That's why you can't talk me out of it. I love you, and I want you to believe in God, but you ain't going to talk me out of it. You got questions? So do I. You get mad at God? I do too. But I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit because what I've seen God move in these two people, move in my life and move in a lot of your lives, he's faithful. Yeah, he's faithful. So today, we're going to grab a hold of hope. You ready? I don't believe you. Are you ready? Come on, everybody say hope. Touch your neighbor and say, get ready. It's going to be good. So hope deferred makes the heart sick. Your heart is part of your soul. Your heart is, we're going to get that in just a minute. Your heart is part of your soul. It's part of your mind, your will, your ability to choose, your emotions. It's all your heart. So when hope is put on pause, it makes you mentally, it makes your heart sick. It makes you emotionally sick when hope is continually put on hold. Okay, but the Bible says, but when the desire, everybody say desire, when desire comes, when that longing comes, when that hunger comes, it is like a tree of life. The word tree there, we understand in, in, in the original Hebrew, it means carpenter. Everybody say carpenter. How many know that Jesus was a carpenter? Yeah, I mean, know that Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, was a carpenter. How I many know that God is a builder? The Bible says that God is building into us to be up into a spiritual house. God is building us a spirit into a spiritual house. Everybody say spiritual. Yeah, say a house. Okay, so when hope is deferred, okay, it makes you sick. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts. But when hunger comes, when that longing comes for the things of God and hope begins to stir on the inside of you, the carpenter is released on the inside of you and then God can build on the inside of you. Because if you're strong on the inside, you'll be strong on the outside. 
If you're good on the inside, you'll be good on the outside. Come on, our, our, our external world is a reflection of what's going on on the inside of us. Sorry, I got excited. But when the carpenter is released, he's the master builder. Build in me. That's why intimacy with God is so important. Intimacy into me. See. Build in me. Build in me. That should be our heart. So the Bible says that it is a tree of life. The word life there is the same meaning in the book of Genesis, where God breathed life into Adam. And when you study it further, so it means to be refreshed. Everybody say refreshed. How many loves to the times of refreshing? Yeah. Sometimes when you, for me, it's the beach. Yeah. When you hear the ocean waves come in, it's awesome. Except for what some people wear on the beach. That kind of steals my refreshing mindset. Yeah, but I need to keep my focus because my ADD is kicking in. Motorcycles. I love to ride motorcycles. I love to watch action movies. I love to do things that, uh, that kind of give me a, a, a little vacation. But when God, when God is released on the inside of you, he refreshes you. And it's a refreshing that isn't a Band-Aid. We want to numb ourselves sometimes. We want to focus on, but they're just Band-Aids. But when God is allowed to refresh you, Gosh, man, it fixes what is broken on the inside. It fixes. He fixes. I, I, I have a problem. I think I'm Superman in a lot of ways when it comes to people. I'm realizing as much as I love people, and that's the reason why, is I want to fix everybody, but I can't. Only he can. He's the fixer. Yeah, he's the fixer. God can build everything and make everything better. It also means to maintain a healthy soul level. When God breathed into Adam, Adam was able to maintain a healthy thought life. He was able to maintain a healthy heart life. He was, maintain, he, he was able to maintain his emotions. He was able to maintain his feelings because he was refreshed by God, and that's what happens. Amen? Let's get into the Bible. How many know that this is church? This is what we do. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Got to hurry. Romans chapter 8. We'll break this down for you. I love Romans chapter 8, verse 12. Uh, we're going to read two verses. Therefore, brethren, that word brother means those who believe, yeah? Therefore, brethren, it doesn't mean just males. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Everybody say debtors. Not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Let's leave that up on the screen for a moment, Stephen. Um, I want to break this down. There, there, I want to break this down for you. Uh, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Everybody say debtors. Debtors. What is debtors? Debtors are ones who owe someone something. Okay? Like your house. Most of us don't outright own our homes. The bank does. Come on, we're in America. Okay, it's what we do. Yeah? Most of us don't out, out, own, out, outright own our cars, so we have car payments. Okay? The bank has paid for that, so we're in debt to the bank for our cars. We're in debt uh, to, our, to our mortgages. We are in debt, crazy in debt. America is so in debt, it's not funny, but we're not here to preach about that. Uh, today. Um, but, you know, we're in debt with our MasterCards. We're in debt with our Visa. We're in debt to St. Elizabeth Hospital, whatever. Um, we're in debt to things. And, and so we owe that. So the Bible says that we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Now, when you read the word flesh, okay, the word flesh means uh, the sensual part of you. It doesn't mean just your skin, it means the soul of you, the sensual part. It means the things that gratify, listen, the things that gratify the, the, the sensual part of you, your soul, your emotions, your feelings, okay? Now, here's why I, I, gotta, I gotta stop and teach this. Those of you who have been with me for the last nine and a half years, you've heard this a trillion billion times, okay? But I'm, you're gonna hear it for a trillion and one, okay? Billion times, you got to understand, I, I think a lot of us people who believe in God and want to go higher and live better lives, I think we need to understand how we are made. We need to understand how we are put together, what makes us tick, yeah? You can have church life, and you can have pastors, and you can have denominations, and you can have religion, but if there's some things that you don't understand between you and God, we, we got to start with some knowledge, I'm not into the fluff and flair and all this stuff. I, I just want relationship with Christ, but I want hope and I want faith. But I need to understand how I'm made up. If I can understand how I tick, 
then I can understand when I'm walking in life, okay, if I can understand that. Because I, I believe in the, in the Bible where Jesus said in John 10, 10, that the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But I love this part. But I have come, Jesus said, that they, which is you and me, come on, say it's me, yeah, may have a, a life and abundant. That means more than you could ever handle. And not bad life, but good life. How many want good life? Yeah? I want good life. I, I, want, I want to live. The life we live here is short. It's very short. We, you know, the lifespan for most people are between 70 and 90. Okay? Compared to eternity. Eternity's forever. This isn't. There's a part of me that says, thank God. But why I'm here, I want to live my life. I want to be happy. I want to have some hope. Am I the only one? Yeah, I know I'm not the only one. I want everybody to say hope. Here's how we're made. Here's how God is made. There's three parts to God. One God, but three manifestations of him. Okay? There's one Kelly Floyd. Thank the Lord. There's one Kelly Floyd, but there's different manifestations of what I do. Um, I am a pastor. Okay? I'm a f husband and I'm a father. Okay? Kelly Floyd, the pastor. Kelly Floyd, the father. And Kelly Floyd, the husband. Okay? One Kelly Floyd, but three parts. Does that make sense to you? Um, one God, but three different parts. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning was God. God loves us so much. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who would ever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3, 16. Learned that in vacation Bible school. I always say vocation Bible school. Never. That's one of the scriptures that I learned. John 3, 16, for God so loved. Okay, so God looked at himself and divided himself into two more parts. The word. Jesus was the word before his name was Jesus. Now, we can split hairs on theology all we want. But before he came to earth, he was known as the word. So in heaven, he's a part of the Trinity. So God split himself up. How? Because he's God. <laughs> Come on, y'all can watch Ghost Hunters and Star Trek and believe in all the force. But, you know, we look at that and like, I don't know. Put your Darth Vader t-shirt on. Let's believe together. Amen. You will believe today. You will believe. Look at mom and dad. Don't you love them? They have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> love it. <laughs> it's great stuff. Okay, so. God divided himself up, Jesus, you're the word. Holy Spirit, you're the power. So there's three parts to God. Then God made man. There's three parts to man, okay? Three parts to humans. We have a body, we have a spirit, and we have a soul, okay? We have a body. Our body's going to decay. It's already started. You want some hope? From the moment you were born, you're starting to decay. <laughs> Isn't that great? Anyway, yeah, okay? So your body's going to die off. It's not always going to be here. Whatever shape you're in, it's not always going to be that way. Thank the Lord. Amen. Okay? So it's not always going to be that way. We're going to die. Okay? Some die prematurely. Some, but your life, when, when your, your body goes back to the dust. Okay? Your body is a shell. The real you. Come on. This is a matrix moment. The real you is your spirit. When you be, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and invite God into your heart through Christ, your spirit lives on forever. So when you die, your spirit lives on, okay? It lives on forever. Your body doesn't, okay? So it's your spirit that has been made new on the inside of you, your spirit. It's your spirit. The Bible says that God is spirit, okay? So it is your spirit that connects to God, spirit to spirit. Come on, everybody say spirit to spirit, okay? So your spirit man is what we call it. Your spirit man is now renewed because you've invited Christ into your heart. So that is the term born again. I'm 101 Christianity. I'm born again. Okay, I'm born again. Here's the problem. We receive Christ and God in our heart. For those of you who, have, have, you know, who are new to church or not sure or whatever, or you've had questions. You receive Christ in your heart. You bow at the, here at, at our altar or in your chair or in your shower, wherever you want. God doesn't clock in and clock out because we're a church. Okay, He's all over the place all the time. So when you receive God, your spirit man is born again. Some people feel hope right away. Some people feel like a load's been lifted right away. They feel like they have purpose and destiny. And some people just do it by faith. They don't have a major emotional feeling. 
Okay? Some people cry. Some people laugh. Some people feel the love of God right away, depending on how many walls we have up. Okay? That brings us to your soul. Your soul is what is scarred. Your mind, your ability to choose, your emotions, your feelings from things that we went through. So you may receive, receive Christ in your heart and been born again. Your eternity is settled. That's why I'm preaching on peace on Wednesday nights. Our eternity is settled as Christians, but we ain't happy here. Come on, let's get real. <laughs> Come on, our eternity is settled. I am no, I, when I, I'm ready to die. Whenever it happens, I know I'm going to be with the Father. I have no fear about it. I am not afraid to die. I have no fear about it. I don't want to leave my family and my friends and my dog. But how many know that all dogs go to heaven? Yeah. Cats, we're still praying about. Just kidding, cat lovers. Anyway, my soul is what's wounded. My emotions, my feelings. So my eternity is settled, but I ain't happy here. And that's where a lot of people get mixed up because they think, well, now I'm a believer. My life should just be okay. And I wish it worked that way. I wish God was a genie in a bottle. I wish I could click my heels together and everything. Been a, I've been in church all my life. 27 years old. I'm 47 years old. Wow, really? I'm 47. Thanks, Sheila. I'm just kidding. I'm 47 years old. And there's days where I ain't happy. I'm a pastor. See, I don't want to kick that religious crap right out of here. There's some days where I'm not happy. There's some days when I struggle. There's some days I'm fighting depression. See, you all fight it too. You just don't tell people. I have a microphone. I don't care. I'm not here to win, friends. There's some days where I'm in bad shape. I still believe, but I'm in bad shape. The great thing is, is I don't have to stay there. See, the Christian life is all about empowerment. You have to activate faith. You have to activate it in your life or you stay in the hole. Okay. Come on, everybody say hope. I promise I'll make you happy here in just a little bit before you leave. Yeah? So that's my soul area. My soul is my emotions, my feelings, my thinking, my thought life. The Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Okay, so how we think is how we are. Okay, but if my emotional being is wounded, if my thought processes is wrong because of what I've been through, then I'm wrong as a human being and I'm struggling in life and I don't know the truth and I'm always struggling. I'm internally tired. I'm addicted. I want to numb, my, numb myself. I, I, uh, I want to, uh, I, I'm fighting depression. Uh, oppression is on me. Anxiety is working in me. And all, all kinds of stuff. People break my heart. I'm stressed out because of bills. Church people break my heart. Come on, y'all. It's the truth. Well, I just want God to move mighty in our service. Why do you have to talk like this before? Or for? Because, like I said, I want this to work for you out there. Church life is church life. I've been in it all my life. And a great church service where God comes, and, and I don't know what some of y'all are used to, and I don't want to freak anybody out, but sometimes the Holy Spirit touches you, and you can't stand, and people fall out. Some people fake it, but some people is real. Whatever. Okay, the presence of God is real. I believe that Jesus walked on the water. I believe that, that he spit in mud and put it on a blind man's eyes. And I mean, Jesus spit in the mud. What if you came up for prayer and I spit in your face? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> Great. God loves you. <laughs> I lo yeah, we would lose somebody. Yeah, because it's America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get sued. What am I doing, Jen? What am I doing? What am I talking about? Spitting. Hmm. Spitting. Yeah, I believe. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I believe in all that. We can have the, the, the Holy Ghost chills and we can feel God in church. And that's wonderful. And we're going to have that. Look, I'm a pastor. I have a church. So I'm not knocking all that. We need that experience. But sometimes that experience that you, you lose it. Two hours later, you go to certain restaurants and you lose it, okay? You see certain family members and you lose the love, you know, whatever. Uh, certain people, when you're in Kroger's, you used to go to church with them and they're walking down the hall and you're like, oh, my God, I got to go right here. 
it's great to have this, and we, we're going to have it. But, man, God wants you to have it out there. Do you know how many people are hurting? How many people in this area are hooked on heroin? How many good Christian people are still getting divorces? Because we don't know how to live together and we don't know how to forgive. We, I, I say this all the time. I'm not knocking it. We keep building churches all over the place. But what's changing in America? It's because we've made church the pinnacle of our relationship with Christ. And church is just part of it. It's not all of it. Like I said, he doesn't clock out when we leave. Oh, they're done praising me because I'm insecure. I'll catch them on Wednesday. No, he's everywhere. Everywhere. He's right here. He's with you in your car. He's with you at home. He's, he's with you when you're crying and you think nobody knows. He's with you when you're hurting. He's with you. That's how much he loves you. When you sin, when you're mad at him, when you think thoughts that you don't understand why you're thinking them, his love never fails. And he keeps loving and he doesn't leave you where you're at. He just begins to build in you, but you've got to let him. You've got to let him. He wants hope to be alive on the inside of you. So our soul area, our emotions and feelings can be messed up. But that's why where hope comes in, I'm going to prove it to you here in just a minute, where hope comes in, where we live life at another level. Let's go. You ready to go? Not the longhorn or red lobster, I meant into the word of God. Yeah, pastor, we're ready to go. You're boring me. Okay. Can we put that scripture back up there, Stephen? Sorry. Big, long bunny trail on spirit life. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. Here's the Matrix moment. If you don't know what the Matrix moment is, go watch the, the movie. I don't owe my flesh anything. Now, there's things that my flesh loves to do, and it's okay. Like going to the beach. Like hobbies, like motorcycles. Okay? Greg, I'm terrible at golf terrible at it. I haven't played in five years. I played last week with my friend up in Ohio. I did pretty good. I still got mad and threw clubs and all that stuff. And yeah, every time there's water, I, yeah. But I, I, I did pretty good. And I realized being out there, it relaxes me in some way. Okay. It relaxes me. So those things are good. Seeing good movies that you like, having fun with your family, spending time with your with your husband or your wife, spending time with your kids. The things that make you laugh, having birthdays, blowing out birthday candles, and having family over most of them. Come on, there's, there's things that we enjoy. But there's also, thing, also things, there's also things about my flesh that I don't enjoy. And that's, that's part of the soul area. When uh, I feel down. When I feel angry and bitter, um, when I'm sinning and I know that I am. Come on, people. Yeah. There's things that, that this is why you got to understand how you're made. We, we get so locked and we become so comfortable with my opinion is a part of who I am. Good, have your opinion. But what if you're wrong? Don't hold so tightly to who you are that you stop God from doing a miracle in your life because you're stubborn. That's why the Bible says don't be wise in your own eyes. You ain't the sharpest tool in the shed or the only fry in the box. Neither am I. You always stay humble. You always stay open. And you stay teachable. I said this Wednesday night. You can't take your belief system and bring it down to your experience. It doesn't belong there. You can't take your belief system in God because the Bible says that God's way is higher than ours. I don't understand it. If I could understand him, I wouldn't need him. So, but I trust him. So I can't bring my belief system down to what I've experienced because then I'm taking God and bringing him down to my level. And God's too awesome for that. So I must aim higher. I must aim higher. I don't owe my flesh, anything. 
when I'm feeling depressed, I don't owe depression nothing. When I'm afraid, I don't owe fear anything. Come on, come on, come on. I don't owe it. When I'm comfortable in my sin, when I'm comfortable in my depression because that's all I know, it's wrong. God didn't make me that way. God didn't make you that way. Who said that you were insecure? Who told you that? Who told you that you could never be successful? Who told you that? Who told you you couldn't make more money in life? Who told you that? Who told you to be afraid? Who told you to be afraid? Who told you to who told you that you weren't worth anything? And who said we have to believe it? Some of you have come from abusive backgrounds, okay? Who told you it was your fault? Because your parents divorced when you were younger. Some of you still carrying that around with you. Doesn't mean it's your fault. We have people in this room that have been molested. Come on, if the church would talk about this stuff 20 years ago, the body of Christ might be in a different position today. Some of you have been touched wrong. Who told you it was your fault? Some of you have been verbally abused and physically abused. Who told you it was your fault? You don't owe that any. You don't owe. You don't owe. We're not. We're debtors, but not to the flesh. Does that make sense to you? That's not you. Fear is not you. Insecurity is not you. It's not Christ in you. That's not. That's not God's plan. It's not God's plan. You don't owe it. Come on, come on. I really want you to get this. You don't owe your flesh anything. That's what the Bible. That's. Man, when God wrote this, who wrote this? Paul? God used Paul to write it? Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> she is right. I did ask. He wrote it. God had this written with you in mind, and you weren't even alive yet. You think about it. You don't owe your flesh anything. Like I said, have your hobby, have your vacations. Those things are great. I'm, this is what the Bible's t- God's talking about, the things that take you down the wrong path to distract you from being everything God created. Why are you alive? Why are you alive on earth? Whatever country you're from, why are you here? It's because God made you for purpose and God made you from destiny. Yeah? Amen. Even those who live in Sailor Park. Yeah? Amen. I'm not, I don't owe my flesh anything. Therefore, brothers, those who believe, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. That word live means how you live your life, okay? So if I keep living my life uh, to my fleshly desires, I will always put God to the right and to the left. He'll be second, third, fifth, tenth on the list of my priorities. Because my flesh, the Bible says, my mind is enmity with him. I'm never going to agree with it. Gosh, I could preach all day. I got to hurry. That's why tonight at 530 come because I'm in the mood. I'm not going to take up an offering unless God says so. It's okay. For if you live according to your desires, that sensual part of you that needs gratification. The reason why we need gratification in our flesh is because we're missing God in a part of our life. (laughs) Four of you agreed with that. That's okay. There's things that my flesh feels like it's need, it needs, but in reality, it could be sin. And sin basically means to miss the mark. It's not a condemnation thing. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, in the beginning of this Bible, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You're not guilty. When you receive Christ in your heart, in your life, you're not guilty. You're not guilty. Can you get that? You are not guilty. Yeah, if it wasn't for Christ on the cross, then we would be guilty. But because of God's great love, he condemned sin in the flesh. Christ became sin for me and nailed it to the cross. Therefore, my past doesn't have to be my future. 
And, and God can accept me for who I am with all my addictions, with all my lying, with all my messed up thoughts, with all my, my issues, and with all my sin. God still loves me because I've received Christ in my heart. When he looks at me, he doesn't see Kelly who's screwed up. He doesn't see Kelly who's addicted. He doesn't see Kelly who's fighting depression. He sees his son Jesus, the righteousness of Christ, and therefore I can stand by his side, by God's side, the one who said moonshine, moonshine, <laughs> yeah, whatever. The one who said, sun, shine, stars shine bright in Texas, wherever you want to shine. Grass grow, cattle grow, animals be alive. God created everything. And I can stand by him and be okay when I'm messed up? Yes, that's because he loves me so much. And he loves you. Just let him love you. Don't get caught up in church life. Don't get caught up in a bunch of rules and religion. Just get caught up in Jesus. The rest will follow. Seek first the kingdom of God. I feel like I had a six gun. I just want to twirl my glasses. <laughs> For if you live according to your desires, you will die. When you look up that word die, it means to actually die. Pretty deep, isn't it? <laughs> I've had friends that kept giving in to their fleshly desires and they died prematurely. I had a great friend of our families, and, and, and we got smokers in here, and, and uh, this has nothing to do with, with any of that. I'm not making anybody feel condemned, but he would, I would, <laughs> I would catch him smoking in his garage late at night, he, like he thought nobody knew. <laughs> really? That's why you have renews it, do's it on your shoulder there. You smell like it. Okay, so, and he secretly was a smoker. Well, he wound up having cancer, and he died. He died. Okay, that means to no longer be alive on earth. <laughs> Everybody's like, die. And we all have our issues. I have mine. I'm just not going to share. I usually share a lot, but I can share everything with you. It's not your business. I have mine. God still loves him. God still loves me. In fact, he's with the Father now. Just because he was smoking doesn't mean he went to hell. Just because there's smoke in hell doesn't mean there's not smoke in heaven. That didn't come out right. Anyway, for if, <laughs> for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But here's the next meaning. It means one who was planted, like a plant, who dried up. Hmm. So we're planted in the word of God. We're planted in hope. We're planted in faith. But because we're not living by the things of the spirit who's renewed, we're living by our fleshly desires. I was once planted and flourishing, but now I'm drying up. Why? Because I'm living out of my flesh side. I'm living out of more of that side than I am the spiritual side. Does that make sense to you? And so a big, now I'm drying up. And I feel like, I feel like this, is, this is what a lot of church people do. I'm not getting fed anymore. Really? Like I'm, your, I'm the one who's responsible for feeding you constantly the things of God? Like you have no relationship with Christ without a pastor. It's relationship with you and God. Well, I'm drying up. Well, it's because you're not praying during the week. Well, I don't like the worship music at church. Okay, well then once you leave here, get in your car and turn on something you do like. Because church ain't about you, it's about us and about God. Right. Well, I don't understand the Bible. It's because you're not reading it at home. Well, I don't understand it. I don't like the King James. Really? You have you version on your smartphone, or if you have a dumb phone, <laughs> go to the family bookstore. There's, go online. There's every, there's like a thousand versions of the word of God out there that makes it easy. It's like Bible hooked on phonics. It will be okay. We have no more excuse. I'm saying it's because I love you because you got to activate it. You have to activate faith. And then you got to put some works to your faith. If not, just because you believe in God doesn't mean anything. The devil believes. The Bible says the demons believe in God and tremble. Just because you believe in God means nothing. Just because you came to church means nothing unless you activate what is put in you. And then it makes your life better. It gives you hope. Everybody say hope. It keeps you moving forward. i got to hurry. Speaking of moving forward. For if you live according to your fleshly desires, you will dry up. Okay? But if by, you, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body. Do, do, do we, what amplified version did I say we needed to go to? That was the other one. Can we, can we go there? Um, 
believe in my notes. Look at you, Stephen. Remind me to give you a raise triple what I gave you last year. I have told you, it's amplified version, John, cha John chapter 16, verse 33. Look, I am who I am. You get what you get when you come to church, so I'm not perfect. Mike, really? Okay, I have told you these things so that in me you, you may have perfect, this is for a uh, commercial for Wednesday night. Everybody say perfect peace. Perfect peace and confidence. In the world you will have tribulation. Outside of church life, you're going to have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But I'm a Christian. I believe in God. You're still going to have heartache. You're still going to have addiction issues. You're still going to fight depression. The Bible tells us, yeah, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have trouble. Okay? You're going to have trouble in your marriage, in your finances, with people, in your body. You're going to have trouble. Okay? You're going to have trials. You're going to go through hills and valleys. You're going to go through hills and valleys. That's why we sing that. You're going to have distress. You're going to have distress. You're going to have frustration. I love the college age people love me. The adults are like, I don't know. You're going to have frustration. Frustration is the fear that your efforts in life will not pay off. You're working so hard for something, but you're afraid it ain't going to happen. So you stay frustrated. Frustration is connected to fear, false evidence appearing real, and it becomes a distraction. You're good in church, but out there you're frustrated. Or if you're a pastor, you're frustrated in church and out. Frustration. But, love buts, in the literal sense. But be of good cheer. Come on, everybody say hope. Be confident. Come on, come on, come on. Have you ever met a confident person? There's a difference between confidence and pride. The confident person that knows. Be of good cheer. Be happy. That's an 80s thing. Don't worry. Be happy. God wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you to worry. Okay? Be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Certain. Be undaunted. Don't be distracted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. So it's through Christ that we have hope. We got to go to the last bit of scriptures in Romans, whatever that is. I got to hurry. Everybody okay? Come on, everybody say hope. Oh, you guys did good on this side. That side still sleep. <laughs> Just kidding. For I consider, that's what Paul said, that the sufferings of this present time. Paul said, I'm considering that the sufferings of this present time. That word time means lifetime, time of life. When Paul wrote that, they were trying to kill him. Not... He wasn't suffering because his internet connection was terrible. He wasn't suffering because he lost his cell phone in the toilet. He wasn't suffering because they were going to turn his electric off. I know it's all relative. Did I say that right? Relevant. We're all relatives. If you think about it, never mind. We are in Kentucky. Paul, people were trying to kill him. They had left him for dead a couple times. He was beaten. They threw rocks at him until they thought he was dead. There were people looking for Paul to kill him. He was in jail. They beat him to where there he was bloody. He was in jail in chains in a cold jail. Not the jails like we have today. It's probably a dirt floor, stone walls, I don't know. Cold. He was sick. He was hungry. He said, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, 
Here's the cool thing. I'm going to end with this. Worship team, you guys can come on up. Here's the cool thing. Now, I understand. Let me preface what I'm getting ready to say. I understand some of the older Christians, they always use the scripture to talk about heaven. When we get to heaven, it's going to be okay. When we get to heaven, it is going to be okay. But we ain't dead yet. And that's a great thing. I need heaven now. I need heaven to come to earth. I need the Christ in me to heal me. I need some hope. Everybody say hope. When you study this out, I ain't got time because I'm running out of time today. When you study this out, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. It's okay, Aaron. Go. Ready? One, two, three. Go. <laughs> see, in our new building, they'll have their own hallway. You won't even see them come on stage, even though they look good. Worthy. Okay, not worthy to be compared with the glory. Everybody say glory. That shall be revealed in us. That's not talking about when we get to heaven. When you study it out, it's talking about the here and now. The word glory... Number one is God's opinion of you. I hate time. Time stop in Jesus' name. That means God's opinion of you is super, super high. But I'm not worthy. Okay, Chucky, you'll never be worthy. Let God love you. His opinion of you is very high. And it's not based on your works and how you live your life. It's based on his love for you. He chooses to love you. He chooses to. Out of his will, God makes the choice to love. Not because he has to, because God is. God is love. Not worthy to be compared with the glory. That word glory also means excellence. Which shall be revealed in us. What that means revealed in us is that people we begin to see you in your now highly favored of God people will see you in your now everybody say now highly favored of God they'll see it in you not because of behavior modification because there's something on the inside of you that's carrying you through troubled times because in this life, we're going to be frustrated. In this life, we're going to have heartache. In this life, we're going to struggle. But because we have the carpenter, because we have the carpenter living on the inside, we have hope. Because he hasn't left me where he found me. Sometimes I, sometimes I wish he would leave me alone. Sometimes I wish he would give up on me because I beat myself up so much. I just want him to leave me alone. Stop loving me because I'm no good. <laughs> we start our pity party. There's only room for one. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Just leave me alone. I failed you so many. Have you ever wanted to love somebody so much, but you feel like you failed them time and time and time and time again? I feel that way with God. I'm no good. I'm freaking no good. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. I don't belong to. I don't. I don't. I don't deserve to be blessed and highly favored. With all my times where I've turned my back on it. With all the times where I've sat in churches and I've felt God moving and I just ignored Him. I ignored Him. When I felt the love of God knocking at my heart, but because I didn't agree with everything, I ignored it. When He tried to fill me with peace and remind me of what I have to be thankful for, I ignored Him because I cared more about my fleshly desire than I did getting healed. Why? Because I was comfortable there. But he still shows up. He's got control issues. He stalk, he's a stalker. I've preached it before. If God was here in human form, he'd be arrested for stalking. What are you doing? If he had a cell phone, he'd be texting you. What are you doing? 
knows what you're doing. He just wants relationship with you. He just wants relationship. He knows what you're doing. He knows how you look. He knows how you sound. He knows when you're hopeless. He wants relationship with you. This whole deal that we have made church, he wants relationship. We've tried to make our way back to God through religion and through rules. And I'm not trying to throw stones at anybody or any denomination or whatever. I just want the truth. I'm willing to mess up what hair I have left to get it. He wants relationship. He wants to take hope and put it deep on the inside of you. So when your flesh feels hopeless, you can tap into the hope that lies on the inside. And it comes through relationship. It comes through letting him love you. Don't fall in love with Kelly. Don't fall in love with Tracy. Don't fall in love with Rachel. Fall in love with Jesus. It's the only way out. Otherwise, you're going to keep searching. You're going to keep looking for things to fulfill you. And it's not going to work. You're going to stay frustrated. been broken you can't you seem like yeah I don't know if I can stay sane I'm good here but you should see my home life I don't want anybody I don't want anybody to come to my house I don't want anybody to know what I'm thinking you think you're the only one you think you're the only one that thought about suicide you think you're the only one that thought about numbing yourself you think you're the only one that can't forgive you Because the hope of glory lives on the inside of you. And if he doesn't, we're going to make that decision today by faith. And I want you to walk out of here different than you came in. I want you to have so much hope that you are able to forgive who you need to forgive. That you are able to live your life at a level that you're somewhat happy for. That the light of Christ can shine in you. That the real you can come alive. If we keep living by our fleshly desires that take us down, we're dried up. We had a plant that was, my wife tries, she does a better job than I do with plants. I kill plastic plants, they just dry up. But we had some plants and they wound up in the garbage. And it was a couple days after the garbage man had come. And on the ground it had rained was part of a dead plant. Here's what the voice said to me. That's your future. That's your future. You ever thought that? It was a lie. But I was depressed at the moment, so I believed it. Don't believe the lie any longer. Today's the day of hope for you. Come on, we're going to keep going. The Bible says we are not of those who draw back. We're going to get refreshed. We're going to get renewed. If you ain't used to this kind of church, welcome to the kingdom of God. Tired of dry and dusty religion that gets no, nowhere. I want something to change here. Stand with me today.